Hi everybody, my name is Zach Peterson and I'm here today to talk about how to use generic components in Flux. Flux now offers generic components inside of the public library. Anybody can access generic components, but I think they may be a bit confusing when you first look at them. The reason they can be a bit confusing is because they don't have any real data attached to them and they don't appear to resemble actual parts. So why would anyone use them? I think it's understandable that someone might ask, what are generic components? So generic components follow a pretty simple concept. They're used in circuit diagramming and they're used in simulators or in circuit calculators to represent an ideal component. They aren't supposed to represent something that you can actually purchase from a distributor. They're not supposed to have anything like a PCB footprint attached to them. They're just supposed to represent an object that you might use in a simulation. So if you're a PCB designer, I think it's natural to then ask, why would anybody use a generic component? Because if you're designing a PCB, the whole point is to eventually get a bill of materials put together and then send a design off to a manufacturer and then of course order all of those components and get it assembled. A generic component totally goes against that idea. It's essentially like a fake component. So why would anyone use one? Well, the entire point of using generic components is that they allow you to experiment with a design. So they don't tie you down to any specific component that you would then have to match up to a part number. You can then experiment with a design in simulation. And because of the unique link between the schematic and the PCB layout in Flux, you can also experiment with that component inside of a PCB layout. That's really interesting because as you change the footprint of that generic component inside of the PCB layout, the design rule engine will then automatically update the design and it will ensure that you always have the design rules being met when it's inside the PCB layout. You can experiment with the, with the uh, generic component in both places and that's actually very useful and it's something that's unique to Flux. So to see how this all works and to show you a workflow involving generic components, we're gonna jump into the schematic editor inside of Flux. Add some generic components to your design. All you need to do is go here to the search bar and just type in generic. There's a big list of parts that will pop up and you can start adding these into your design. Um, you'll even notice down here, there's a generic through hole resistor that you can use. I'm just gonna add in some components and we're gonna create a quick low pass filter. So here, as I put these components in and I start to wire them up, um, you'll probably notice a few things if you click on some of the components. So for example, in this capacitor, you'll notice we don't even have a capacitance value assigned. So here I'll just make it 22 microfarads. Here for this resistor, we do have a resistance assigned, but you'll notice in both components, there's actually no manufacturer part number. So this is intentional with uh, generic components. With generic component, we don't have any of that information because these aren't necessarily meant to represent a real part. Um, however, as we uh, start to wire all this up and we complete this circuit, you may notice here in the simulation area that there are some simulation metrics that we can access and we can display those on the schematic and they will update live in real time. As all of this is running, we can then spot the specific uh, uh, electrical values that we care about um, in the schematic as we change different values for these components. So that really illustrates the benefits of using generic components to create a design. Essentially what you are doing is you are allowed to iterate through different values for these components. You can then examine how the electrical behavior changes as you change the, uh, the uh, component values uh, for your generic components. That's really valuable because what you can do is you can experiment with different component values as you work on the design. And as you do that, you can eventually settle on the uh, component values that you actually wanna use in the PCB. And you're doing this without being tied to a manufacturer part number. Now, eventually, once you settle on the component values that you want, you can then take those component values, look for an actual uh, part that you would purchase from a distributor, 
and then you can enter in the manufacturer name here. So for example, we can select Viché, and then we can enter in a part number that we would actually procure. Then we would want to make sure that uh, we select the, the corresponding package for that part. And then we basically uh, finished up our design. Um, we're, we're all done here, and then once we select uh, the packages, um, we can move on to the PCB layout. Now, we could take a different approach here when we're inside of the PCB layout. Now, inside the PCB layout, what I can actually do is when I have all this stuff arranged, I can actually uh, experiment with different uh, component values uh, but in terms of the footprint. So I don't necessarily need to change the capacitance or the resistance if I don't want to when I'm inside of the PCB layout. But what I can do is I can change the package. This allows you to experiment with a package size once the, uh, the component is already brought into the PCB layout. And so that's valuable because if you're in an existing layout and um, let's say uh, you wanna experiment with different sized resistors, if it's in an existing layout, you may want to figure out what's the largest package size that you can use. That's useful if you want to then maybe swap to a resistor, let's say, that has a larger power rating. Those tend to come in larger packages. And so because of that, it is actually very useful to figure out what is the largest package size that you can fit into a given space in a PCB layout. This allows you to do that. So by starting from a generic component, you're actually starting with something that is really general and non-specific, and then you eventually will convert to a real component that you intend to use in the PCB. Those are the components that you'll then actually order from a distributor, send those off to an assembly house, and then those will get assembled into your final board. So just to summarize, the entire point of generic components is to experiment in your design. And eventually, as you continue experimenting, you are able to land on a set of components that is going to work best both in your schematic and in your PCB layout. Now, Flux is really unique because of this link between the schematic and the PCB layout. It makes it very easy to just start swapping footprints and playing around with the component packaging that is gonna work best in your layout and make sure that you don't violate any clearance rules as well as any of your other design rules that you set up in the PCB layout. So that's what we have going on with generics and we hope that you will start using generics in your design to help you land on the best component components that are going to work for you. Thanks everybody and tune in next time for more of our tutorials.